Hi, my name is Mike Gaben, and welcome to Mission 28 of this KSP campaign. Oh my, do we have a lot going on this episode. I've got a total of six different contracts that I'll be working on, though to be honest, all but two of them will have to wait until next episode to be completed. Well, hopefully. But all of them will at least have some of the requirements met this episode. Not all of this is going to be accomplished by this little vessel, though. The highlight will be Jeb and company taking the Ares to the surface of the moon, but we'll be starting off sending the M27 Remora Automated Crew Embarkation Runabout, otherwise known as Racer, off to rescue Lagerbin and Jaring Kerman from low orbit about Kerbin. Thank you Grunger von Draken for the name suggestion. You were obviously inspired by the parasitic way that this ship latches on to the station. I'm rather fortunate here as both Lagerbin and Gehring are currently behind me in their orbits and, since they're in lower orbits, they'll be catching up to me. I only had to wait 18 minutes for the transfer burn. As you can see, the racer is flying autonomously. This is thanks to its hex probe core, which is under the solar panels in the service bay. This type of rendezvous has come up several times already in this series. Heck, there were three of them last episode alone. But a mod I don't think I can extol enough is better burn time, and I'm surprised I haven't drawn attention to this particular feature yet. Note how, as I close in on logger bin, better burn time is giving me my closest approach and when that will happen, as well as the estimated burn time to bring us to a relative stop. Okay, that's a relative stop. It's just about time for us to meet our newest recruit. Oh, she's an engineer. That's my third one. Oh, and she's got the uh, the default female facial facial texture. I'll have to fix that later. So uh, there we go, RCS. Oh, she's got the default helmet on too, rather than my engineer's colors. I'll have to fix that later as well. But right now, it's time for us to plot our course to Gehring. Now this situation is a bit different. Gehring is behind us in an almost identical orbit, so what we're going to need to do is slow ourselves down. To do that, we'll just burn Prograde to raise our apoapsis, and then meet up with him after doing a single orbit. Use a little RCS here at the end. Well, two kilometers seems to be about as close as we're going to get. Our altitudes must be a bit different here. Well, no matter. Bringing that distance down as we close in is pretty routine at this point. Wow, it took just an hour and a quarter after undocking to get both of these two. Pretty sweet. Yes! Gehring is a scientist! Look at that! That's awesome. Thus far, Bob's been my only scientist. Good stuff. I do like these new reflections with the new texture replacer, but I'm getting this weird facial animation glitch. I've had that in previous installs before. I do like that texture on the back of the helmet though, that sort of cloth texture, that's really nice. Well, I believe that animation glitch is connected to the reflections, but I don't want to turn off the reflections because I really like them have to see what I can do but that's for the future because uh, it's time to get back to the station. Now the station is behind us but in a higher orbit so we're going faster. Now we could wait until we come all the way around in our relative orbits and sneak up behind it again. But that'll take days. Let's see if we can not expedite the situation. We'll start by just raising our apoapsis to 120 kilometers, the altitude of the station. Now we need to slow ourselves down, which means raising our orbit some more. This is very much going to be a trade-off between fuel and time. The higher I raise my orbit, the quicker I'll get there, but if I raise my orbit too high, my encounter speed will be too large, and I won't have enough fuel to stop and make the rendezvous. I'm starting off by just setting up a burn at Apoapsis to judge the costs. Okay, I got this 57 meter per second burn that gets me an encounter speed of 24 meters per second. I can certainly afford that. But this burn's two days away. I don't want to wait that long. 
This burn raises my apoapsis to about 150 kilometers. So what I'm going to do is just perform the same burn but on my current orbit. Oops, about. Okay, there we go. That's 150 kilometers. Okay, so now what we're going to do, just back on the normal vector just for the solar panels, but I want to set up a very trivial burn here at periapsis. We'll just move the vessel out of the way. We'll add a maneuver. We'll get up our uh, maneuver node evolved windows up here. Make sure that's on the periapsis. And then I'm just going to put in, I don't know, some, some trivial amount. Let's just put in uh, one meter per second retrograde just to have something in there for the burn. There we go. Okay. And we'll start just uh, hopping ahead orbits here. So. We'll hop ahead in orbit. Oh, do another one. Oh, oh, there it is. All we have to do is tweak this. Notice that the burn is just an hour and three quarters away rather than two days. That's because raising my apoapsis is slowing me down right now rather than later. Now I just have to do a few orbits, perform this tiny burn, and then ride around one more time and we're back at the station. But before we get to all that, Let's take a look at the newest version of Texture Replacer called, with tongue firmly in cheek, Texture Replacer Replaced. Okay, logger bin. All right, we'll move this over to here, and there's this random button. Let's just hit random, see what we get. Well, somehow I have some old textures here that are no longer there. Oh, there we go. All right, Gehring's turn. Random. Again, some blank ones. Oh, the Chris Hadfield look. Very nice. All right, that looks awesome. And we can also adjust their uniforms. And while we're at it, we'll make sure that, uh, here we go, the default engineer uniform should be the orange one. There we go. And now let's set ourselves the default scientist. So I don't have to keep setting this. There we are, default scientist. Okay, pilot. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. No, scientists are blue. Oh my gosh, there we go. And then the pilot's going to be the yellow. Uh, this is based upon the uh, Star Trek original series colors in case uh, you didn't notice that already. Yeah, there is a lot built into this mod. Um, what I'm particularly intrigued with is the possibility of having different uniforms or even different visor colors uh, for not only different classes but different situations in different levels gotta just be a little bit careful because I don't want to end up having to install too many textures definitely something that I'm gonna be playing around with later meanwhile only four hours after leaving we're back at the station with our new recruits of course we still got to get them down to the surface to complete the contract but I've got one more Kerbal still coming in the meantime it's time for the next mission I know that at the conclusion of the last episode I said that the first thing I would do is send the Ares off on her mission, but then I started to think about it and realized that that was going to pose a problem. The only thing that kept me from fulfilling this station contract last time was the requirement for 4,000 units of liquid fuel, but if I sent the Ares on her way to the moon, it would be taking 900 units of fuel with her, and this launch wouldn't then be enough to fulfill the fuel requirement. And by the way, this vehicle is pretty much identical to the one from Mission 24 last episode that is now forming the core of the station. The only thing I added was an array of RCS thruster blocks so that it could now dock. Unfortunately, we're out of docking berths on the station, which, by the way, also now has a name. It's Kier, as in K-I-R, yeah, I know, originality is not my strong point. Anyway, we need to undock the Ares temporarily and shuffle it off to the side a bit so that the fuel barge can get in here. Then comes the job of transferring over the fuel, making sure to leave a bit in the barge so that I can deorbit it. Just under 100 units left, that should be plenty. You can see here that I currently have 3,479 units of liquid fuel. So with the fuel the barge is using to deorbit, that should leave enough behind once the Ares comes back with its 900 units. Or so I thought. 
Unfortunately, and obviously unknown to me at the time, I had missed emptying the 2.5 meter fuel tank. That's 360 units of fuel that is now on its way to burning up in Kerbin's atmosphere. So when the Ares redocked... Huh? What happened? How did I screw up? I'm 77 units short. Now if I had acted quickly, I might have been able to recover the barge. It was nowhere near entering the atmosphere yet, and clearly has a lot of fuel on it. But unfortunately, I took the more direct and expensive route. Though I should mention that these vessels are about 60 grand a pop, it's not like the fuel is going to waste. Well, okay, there was the one tank of fuel that went to waste, but this extra stuff will get used. There's now more fuel up here than can be held in the station core. So I'm docking this in such a way as to leave another docking port for the Ares to easily dock with. If you look to the right, you'll see that I've got the reaction wheel menu pinned there. I did get some wobble when I docked before, and having reaction wheels perpendicular to each other is only going to be worse. I've already toggled off the reaction wheels in the probe core, and I'm going to be ready to disable the main reaction wheels as soon as docking is complete. Oh, come on. Grab hold. Jeez, is it, there we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, toggle the torque. And in fact, let's keep SAS off altogether. We'll worry about fixing the station's attitude later. Right now, I just want to dock the Ares and finally get this station contract off my back. I do have persistent rotation installed, which means that time warping doesn't stop rotation or wobbling. I suspect the station is rotating very slowly. If it is, it's not posing a problem thanks to the nav ball docking alignment indicator mod. Coming in at a funny angle like this would certainly be more challenging without it. I've certainly had enough practice with it of late, that's for sure. Alright. Boom. Done. Yes, finally! All right, off to the moon we go. I'm considering this a continuation of the mission that brought Jeb, Bill, and Bob up here last episode. The main theater for this mission is going to be the moon, and while we set up our transfer there, let's look at the three contracts we hope to polish off. Job 1 is going to be picking up Lanfred Kerman, who is in this somewhat inclined retrograde orbit of the moon. But once we get him aboard, we're not heading home, oh no! If you take a look at the third contract, you'll see Explore the Moon, which has three components. Plant a flag on the moon, walk on the surface of the moon, and return to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. And it is the first contract on the list that is determining our landing location. We need to take three temperature surveys on the surface of the moon. These are all in a small cluster, so once down, I'll have to look into seeing if we can afford the hops to each location. As for the lunar injection, well, you've seen all this before. I'm aiming to get my periapsis just touching Lanford's orbit, which did require a mid-course correction. But why don't we just take ourselves into the moon's sphere of influence and finally take a detailed look at the Ares M25. With a crew capacity of five landing struts and almost three kilometers per second of Delta V, this is certainly my most ambitious vehicle to date. Basically, I want this to be able to do most anything in the Kerbin system. It should have the Delta V required to get the most orbits around Kerbin, land on either the Moon or Minmus, or even stick its nose out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and orbit the Sun for a while. It is built around the Mark I lander can, which is 200 kilograms lighter than the Mark I capsule that you've seen on so many of my other spaceships. Because this thing will eventually be going further than any other crewed vehicle before it, I've equipped it with the more powerful Communitron DTS M1 for communication. For landing, I have the LT-1 landing struts, and to illuminate our landing zone, I have four Illuminator Mark I lights. Thrust is being provided by four engines, two LV-909 Terriers, and two 48-7S Sparks. 
To try and make this look better, I use the translation tools in the VAB to tuck the four columns of fuel tanks and crew modules beneath the Rocco Max brand adapter too. Now these parts don't attach radially, and there aren't multiple connection nodes under the adapter. However, the tiny 1 kg cubic octagonal struts do attach radially. Once attached, they provide attachment points for other parts. You can then hide the struts using the translation tools. Alright, let's go get Lanford. I am a bit concerned with having enough fuel. I designed this to be able to land on the moon and return, but with the idea that the capture would be a standard low orbit, not an inclined high altitude retrograde orbit. Just landing from a retrograde orbit adds a bit to the fuel cost, though admittedly not much as the moon rotates very slowly. Actually, the Apollo missions all entered lunar orbit in a retrograde direction as it, it facilitated a cheaper return trajectory should the mission have to be aborted which of course did happen with Apollo 13. And we've got ourselves our fourth pilot. Once back at the station, Lanfred will join Gehring and Lagerbin to go back down to the surface to complete these contracts. In the meantime, let's fix up his head texture. A texture replacer replaced! Lanfred. There we are. And random. Yep! That'll do. Oh, yes, a handsome young man down there. Okay. Well, we've got 1,878 meters per second left to get us down to the moon's surface and back to Kerbin. We'll start by getting down to a 12 kilometer orbit. This will help us line up our descent better. Oh, hang on. We're over the northwest crater. Come on, Bob. All right. You Oh, hang on, he can't eat. Oh, geez, Jeb is in the uh, command capsule, of course. Okay, we gotta, we gotta get Jeb out of the way. Uh, transfer, transfer, transfer. Jebediah, uh, where's the, it's the empty ones over here. Okay, we still got six minutes to periapsis, but uh, this biome could disappear any moment. Okay, transfer Bob up there. And, come on, EVA Bob. And... EVA report. Yes, 21.6 science. We'll transmit that back home. But after completing our insertion, it was time to survey the situation. I need to hit that blue temperature waypoint. Rather than change my orbit any further, which will just cost more fuel, we'll just wait for the moon to rotate the waypoint under our trajectory. It shouldn't take too long, and besides, this will give Bob the opportunity to grab some more near space EVA science. Well, there we go. That's the twin craters, but that was the end of it. Remember, Jeb and Bob have been in orbit about the moon before and managed to pick up a lot of biomes then. No, it's time to get us down to the surface. Oh, things are looking pretty lined up here. Let's do this thing. When wanting to hit a specific target, I find it helps to come in a little steeper than normal. I have the landing lights toggled with the gear action group so I don't have to turn them on separately. Even on the day side, the lights really help judge the distance during the final stages of the landing. Why don't we cut ourselves a little bit closer in this descent? Okay, we're now about 40 kilometers away. And I'm keeping an eye on my suicide burn distance from Kerbal Engineer, which is about four kilometers. So things are still comfortable. I don't want this to get anywhere near zero, and I'm in big trouble if it goes negative. Wait, hold on. Better burn time just kicked in. It's telling me I'm about 100 seconds away from impact, and that my estimated burn is 49 seconds. I didn't know it did this. This is awesome. Well, this is way more useful than I think the uh, suicide burn distance stuff is. This is looking pretty good. I want to land right in the middle of that cluster of waypoints. I guess I'm just going to go for that middle one. And hopefully it won't be too far to the other ones. Alright, we'll just let ourselves fall. I can actually just see my shadow down there on the surface. Uh, 
retrograde icon up towards the top of the map ball. And we're still a couple of kilometers up from the surface, so uh, let's fall for a bit here. Oh, well, I actually, I actually really do like this. I think I'm going to come in right. I might be coming a little bit short. Yeah, I think I am coming a little bit short, so uh, let's just sort of just thrust upwards just a little bit to carry to carry us a little bit further along. Give us a little bit more airtime, so to speak. No, no, I still think I'm definitely coming short now. And I need to slow myself down, but I need to pitch more this way. Yes, yes, I want to come even more. There we go. Just burn a little bit more this way and try and carry ourselves over near to where that other waypoint is. I'm actually doing all right, I think, fuel-wise. <laughs> we definitely have enough to at least get ourselves uh, back into orbit. After that, we will see. All right, I think this is good. Let's just get ourselves down. Gonna stop our side. Well, no, 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 I'm pushing myself back up. Oh, shoot. In an effort to stop my, cut off my horizontal velocity completely, I ended up pushing myself up a little bit. Alright, we're just gonna ride this down. Just about there. See how the lights are helping? Oh, there's my shadow, and whoa, 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 a little hard! Ah! Shoot, <laughs> Hit C there by a second. Hit a little hard. Nothing seems to be broken. Okay, we're down. Oh, that's that's interesting. I, it's the far waypoint out here that's flashing. It looks like it's the furthest waypoint from he, me that's flashing. What's well, that's kind of interesting. Here, let's let's actually try and do. Our temperature scan, that's what the contract calls for, and then we'll see what happens. So, log temperature. Alright! <laughs> Got all three at the same time. Awesome! Alright, well, don't have to do any hopping. That's gonna help. We can trans... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my electricity is going down. My solar panels are not exposed. Oh, a little bit of a design flaw there. We'll just hang on to all of our science. Uh, why don't we get our Kerbals out here? And Jebediah, he's the first one by the door. He's in the way of everybody else. So Jebediah, we'll just have, there's no ladder here, so we'll have to let go and then just hit RCS right away. And oh, oh, ow, shoot, oh. That was one big fall for Kerbal Kind. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Jeb is as graceful as a cat. And then of course we got everybody else out. It was Bill that actually figured out that uh, if you could just climb down and just step onto this monoprop tank it makes things a lot easier. But this is actually our newly acquired fourth member joining the rest of the team. And now with everybody here it was time for the big event. And Jeb, I think you get the honors. Plant flag. And then we gotta think about what momentous thing to put on our plaque for this occasion. Okay, it's the Aries 25M. Jebediah, Bob, Bill, and Lanfred. Oops, Jeb misspelled his name. We came, we saw, but can we get back? You know, I think that's going to have to be a question we're going to have to leave for the next episode. And in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.